in mentoring the young ministers, I would tell them, if you're going to have a guest minister in, don't choose the Sunday when they don't get to sleep. <laughs> and they have to turn the clock up an hour. And half the church sleeps in and says, oh, I forgot to turn my clock up. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Just kidding. Glad to be here. Hello, Fusion Church. Good to see you all. Bless you, bless you, Annabelle. Jake. <laughs> the Lord is good. It's a privilege for me to come, to share, and to be with you. So happy to have my wife of almost 45 years in a couple months, Mrs. B, Mrs. Val. I'm really blessed. I have five wonderful, wonderful children. All love God, love the church, love the kingdom of God, love the word of God. I have 13 wonderful grandchildren, some of whom are here today. And some may be in the other section of the church with the children because I don't see them all, but uh, I'm sure they're around somewhere. Um, where'd Sloan go? And kids, Annabelle, I see. Where's Thaddeus? This reminds me of a story. I was uh, pastoring for two years. I went to a pastor's conference, and that night was the plenary service, and my pastor was speaking, and I, I couldn't help myself. I was out golfing on the golf course. <laughs> and so that night, my pastor was talking to all this group of pastors, a couple hundred pastors, and he, he wanted to talk about this son in the faith, me, who had started this church down in Poway. And he says, I want to tell you about my son in the faith, Doug Balcom, who started this church. Uh, Doug, would you stand up? And the, no one stood up. And then he said, where is he? Where is he? And my wife says, he's golfing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Thaddeus might be golfing. I, don't, I really don't see him there. Is he here? There he is. Okay. Hi, Thaddeus. <laughs> all right. So I'm a blessed person because of all these great relationships I have. My family, my children, my grandchildren, my son-in-law, the pastor, my son-in-law, the construction guy, my daughters-in-law. Oh, I'm a blessed man. And I love coming to Fusion Church. A few months ago, actually a few weeks ago, I was here. Came for your anniversary service, 11 years. Congratulations. And the pastor had asked me to speak several months ago. And if you, I have to give you this background. When you're a pastor, the hardest thing about speaking, especially every week, is not to find something to speak, but to feel that it's what God wants you to speak. The Bible is a wonderful book. But it's a challenge to feel like you know what God wants you to speak on. So when pastor asked me to come here, I began praying, meditating, thinking, contemplating, what, what does God want me to share? I, I really don't. I have thousands of things I can speak about, really. When I walked in the service a month ago, sat right down here in front of the McSwains, I knew what to speak about. And it's for all of you. But it's just lots for these young people here. And it's for several of you out here that are wondering, what are you going to do with your life? I want to talk to you about the subject, the word of the Lord is with him. There's a story back in 2 Kings. I'm just going to read a couple verses here, but I'm going to give you the backdrop of the story. The kingdom of Moab was paying tribute to the kingdom of Israel, a lot, bunch of sheep and goats and cattle and all that. But they got tired of doing that, so they rebelled. So like all the other stories in the Bible... When kings rebel, kings fight. And so the king of Israel and the king of Judah said, let's go fight the Moabites because they've rebelled against us. So they said, it's a good plan for us. So they went off to this battle. And for seven days, they marched. And all of a sudden, they realized, we are not about to win this battle. We are out of water. There's no water or food for our, our horses and our men. What are we going to do? And this brings us to this verse in 2 Kings chapter 3. It says this, Jehoshaphat, he was the king of Judah. He asked, is there no prophet of the Lord here through whom we may inquire of the Lord? An officer of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here. He used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. Jehoshaphat said, I want you to hear this because this is going to be my theme this morning for a few minutes. Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Edom, they went down 
to him. The word of the Lord is with him. When it comes down to crunch time, when everything is on the line, life and death is on the line, when you don't know where to turn, what you really need is to find someone that has the word of the Lord with him. He didn't say, hey, oh, Elijah, yeah, he's got deep pockets. He's got an a unlimited American Express card. No. He didn't say, oh, Elisha, he's a great musician. No. He didn't say, oh, Elisha, he's got great computer skills. No. He didn't say, oh, Elisha, he's got a lot of friends. No. Elisha, he's got a special op force with him. No. What got the king's attention was he knew of Elisha one thing. The word of the Lord is with him. We live in a very uncertain time. We live in a time of all sorts of turbulence in our world, in our country, in our politics, in our morals, in our schools. We live in a time of, of tumultuous shaking. And what we need, church, what we need, Fusion Church, what each of you need is to be a person that could be said of you, they have the word of the Lord with them. Is the word of the Lord with you? Another king came along named Zedekiah. It's towards the end of the book of uh, Jeremiah we find these passages. Jeremiah was a prophet to Judah. King Zedekiah, he knew he was in big trouble. And listen what he says in second, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 37, 17. King Zedekiah sent for him. That's Jeremiah. He brought him to the palace where he asked him privately, is there any word from the Lord? And Jeremiah said, yes, you are going to be delivered into the king of Babylon. Is there any word from the Lord? What our world needs and what we're going to see more and more is people are going to be stripped down of all of the false gods and all of the false things that they put their security in. And they're going to say, is there anybody that really has a word from God? And all of you can have a word from God. Young people, I want to tell you, your future is bright if there's one thing you do, and that is get a hold of the word of God so it could be said of you later in your life. There he is. The word of the Lord is with him. What a thing to be said. The word of the Lord is with you. So let me share with you some thoughts about this word of the Lord. First of all, Fusion Church, the word of God is coming to you. The word of God is coming to you. From Genesis to Revelation, we have God bringing his word, describing his word, speaking of his word to the people. It began all the way back in Genesis 15, 1. And this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. And he said, do not be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield. I'm your very great re reward. God's word came to Abram. And through the course of time, through thousands of years now, God's word, God's word, God's word came to the prophets, came to the patriarchs, came to the kings, came to rulers, came to laymen, came to fishermen, came to tax collectors, came to all sorts of uh, walks of life. But it was the word of God coming to them. Here you are, Fusion Church, the word of God is coming to you over and over and over and over again. Every Sunday, your pastor is preparing a message. He's, he's studying the scripture. He's praying. He's ha asking God, give me a word to give to the people. Why? Because we need the word of the Lord. All the way to Revelation, where it says in 1913 of Revelation, he is dressed in a robe dipped in blood. His name is the word of God. More like Jesus, Jesus is the word of God. Wherever the word of God is being preached, taught, shared in small groups and connect groups, that's what you call your groups, the connect groups, the word of God is coming to you. The word of the Lord needs to be with you. It's the one thing that's going to make you stand. It's the one thing that the world's going to crave for and want answers for. It's the word of God coming to you. In John, it says it this way, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. He was with God in the beginning, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. And in him was life, and that life was the light of men, the light of all mankind. And that light now shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not and will not overcome it. Jesus is the word. You're studying about more like Jesus. Well, Jesus is the word. Jesus is the one that said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. To be more like Jesus is more serving, to be more sharing, to be more compassionate. But to be like Jesus is to be full of the word where it, the word of the Lord is with him. Wherever Jesus went, the word of the Lord was with him. 
He went and he taught in the, in, the, in the synagogues and they said, wow, he speaks with authority. He speaks with power. He speaks with knowledge of the word of God because he was the word of God. When he walked with the disciples on the road to Emmaus after the resurrection, it says he opened to them the scriptures and their heart burned as he opened the scriptures. Why? Because the word of the Lord was with him. Church, Jesus wants you to be full of his word. He wants the word of God to keep coming to you. You can find places to study the Word. I understand the uh, new ladies' Bible study. Roxanna McSwain is teaching a ladies' Bible study. Hello, McSwains. I can remember almost one of those standstill moments in my life, and there's several of them. But one of them was when I went to the door of Roxanne's house, making a pastoral call. It must have been almost 40 years ago now. Over to their house on Echeverry in Ramona, and I knocked on the door. And I began to share with this lady who had visited our church, the story of the parable of the sower where he sowed the word of God. And I said, you know, the word of God comes, but the devil tries to steal it away like the birds of the air. The ground wants to crop up with weeds so it doesn't make the word productive. But I said, if you'll get a hold of the word of God, the word of God will get a hold of you and your husband, you will bring forth fruit. That's over 40 years ago. These are lifelong friends of mine. I salute you. I give thanks for you. You guys are a blessing. Get in the Bible study. You're talking about a woman who for four decades has been receiving the Word of God, studying the Word of God. This church has all kinds of leaders. Your elders are people that know the Word of God. They're not, they're not just new converts. They know the Word of God. Find people around you that have studied the Bible and can explain to you the Scriptures because you want it to be said of you, the Word of the Lord is with them. Well, not only is the Word of the Lord coming to you, but the Word of the Lord now will prove you. It will prove you true. There's a story back in Genesis of Joseph receiving a word from God about his brothers bowing down to him and all of this stuff. And you know the story. Joseph gets betrayed, thrown into prison, sold into captivity, into the prison house of Egypt. But a long story short, Joseph became a great deliverer uh, for God's people. But Psalm 105, verse, here, verse 5, verse 19, says... Till what God foretold came to pass, the word of the Lord proved him true. So let me talk about this. If you're going to say the word of the Lord is with you, then let me explain that. The word of the Lord is going to prove you true every single day. See, the Bible says there are great and, and wonderful promises, great precious promises that are given to us. And with every promise, there is a provision of that promise where that promise will come to fruition and come to pass. Such was the case of Joseph as a young boy. He had a promise from God. In the end of the story, that promise is fulfilled. We see Joseph saving God's people. But between the promise and the provision is a terrible P word, and that's called problems. That's the proving ground. Because with every promise of God's word, before the provision, there's usually a proving problem time. Well, that's why people say, Pastor, I don't know why this is happening. I'm doing all the right things. I'm trying to do what God says. I'm trying to forgive. I'm trying to love my wife. I'm trying to love my husband. I'm trying to raise the kids. I'm trying to, but, but it's not seeming to work yet. Hang in there. Keep working the promises of God, obeying the word of God. Let the word of God prove true and prove you true because ultimately there will be the provision of his promises. Go through the problems. Don't give up in the middle of the storm. Could you imagine if Joseph said, well, I guess those dreams were not from God. I guess it's never going to come to pass. Here I am in slavery in Egypt. Here I am in the jailhouse of Egypt. Here I am with nobody knows who I am. If those things happen in your life, those are problems but they only are the proving ground until the answer comes. If the word of the Lord is with you, if the word of the Lord is with you, it doesn't mean that there's not going to be challenges. Times when you're tested, they will come. But can it be said of you, the word of the Lord is with him? I love that statement. That phrase caught my mind. And it's, it's in my heart this morning because no matter what you do in life, no matter what accolades you, you get, no matter what praise of man you get, no matter how many degrees you get in education, no matter how many scholastic awards you get in athletics, no matter how many music scholarships you get for your music, the thing that's going to matter ultimately, long term, is will it be said of you, the word of the Lord is with them. The word of the Lord. It's more valuable than anything else. Well, God will reveal himself to you through his word. 
As a pastor, one of the things that people used to say to me all the time was, Pastor, I don't know what God's saying to me. I don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know what my future holds. Get into the Word of God. Let the Word of God get into you. Be a person, be a man, be a woman who has the Word of God with you, and then you will hear God speak to you, and God will reveal himself to you. 1 Samuel 3, this young man, Sam, uh, Samuel, this little boy in the temple of the Lord, it said, the Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. The prophet Micah said that in the last days there'd be a famine, not for water, not for food, but for hearing the word of the Lord. We live in that world now. People are running here, people are running there, they're turning to this, they're turning to that. They have their Alexas, their Googles, their answers on their fingertips and on their, their smartphones and all that stuff. But they don't find any word from God. And they don't find any revelation of who God is or what Jesus is doing or is Jesus real or does he love me? I want to encourage you today, find out through the word of God. Let him speak to you. Let him open the word to you. Let him reveal himself to you. This verse is going to be your memory verse. I saw it in the bulletin as I came in this morning, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is breathed by God. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God might be thoroughly equipped for every good work. If you want to be prepared, ready for every good work, ready to be like Jesus, what you need is the Word of God. All Scripture, all Scripture, all Scripture, all Scripture. There's a lot of crazy ideas out there. Well, I'm only of what Paul says. Or I'm only of what Jesus said in the Gospels, right? I don't look at it at all in the Old Testament. No, all Scripture, it reveals who Jesus is. Paul said, I, de I, don't de I did not keep myself from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Be a church, be an individual who knows the whole counsel of God. God will reveal himself to you through his word. I love 2 Timothy 3.16. There's so many great things. You could just do a whole message just on that verse. One of the things I like about this phrase here, correcting and training in righteousness, it, it was a nautical term. And of course, in the Bible days, they didn't have all the kind of transportation we have now, obviously, but they did have ships. They did have sailing vessels. And it's a nautical term that is used here that when the, the ship was, was listing to a side or another, they would adjust the, the, the sails so that they would catch the wind right and they would be back up. And it's sort of like tacking, if you've ever been in a sail ship, sailboat and tacked up through a harbor or something like that. That's the idea of correcting, back and forth, correction and righteousness. And what happens in our life is we get off kilter. We get over, you know, we almost tip to one side or another. But if we're in the Word of God and we have the Word of God coming to us, it keeps correcting us onto the right path. And the result is, it says here, you'll be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Greek word for there, and I don't, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I, I learned this. It means you will not be a dry stick. You will be a, a fresh light. You will be fresh. You will be spiritually fresh. If you've been around people that are just stale, I, I'm not saying that they smell stale. They might smell stale. But, you know, they're just, their spiritual life is stale. There's no zeal. There's no passion. There's no pathos. There's no energy. There's no excitement about who God is or the church or the kingdom or the Bible or Jesus. That, that's stale. But if you're in the Word of God, you will be fresh. That's what it says. All right. First, uh, fourthly, the Word of God needs to be in our heart and in our mouth. If the Word of God is with you, the Word of God needs to be in you and needs to come out your mouth. We understand the power of confession and speaking the Word of God. All that thought comes back from Deuteronomy. Way back under the book of the law, Deuteronomy 30, it says this, I'm commanding you today. It's not too difficult for you. It's not beyond your reach. And by the way, church, what I'm talking to you about today, it's not beyond your reach. It's not too difficult for you. It's not up to, in heaven that you have to ask, who will ascend to heaven to get it and proclaim it so that we may obey it? No, or is it behind, beyond the sea so that you have to ask, who will cross over the sea and get it, proclaim it to us so we may obey it? No. The word is very near you. It is in your heart, in your mouth, and in your heart that you may obey it. Is the word of God in your heart? Is the Word of God in your mouth? Are you full of the Scriptures? Are you full of the Word of God? Is the Word of God with you? Can it be said of you, the Word of the Lord is with them? Some of you young people here, and I'm saying young people, those of you under 20, and there's a lot of you under 20, 
Your future, it wants, God wants it to be said of you, the word of the Lord is with you. From this church, from this church, this local church right here, this fusion church, God wants to raise up some missionaries and some pastors and, and heralds, preachers of the word of God, the truth. He really does. I want all of you to consider this. When you leave this morning and when you lay down tonight to go to sleep, I want you to ask yourself the question, can it be said of me, the word of the Lord is with him? In every stage of your life, I was a preacher and pastor for over 40-some years with the, the other ministries I was involved in. Now I, I'm kind of retired. I live out in the desert like a hermit, you know, like John the Baptist, except I, I stay away from the locusts and stuff. But anyway, I now have a flock that's different. I was... I, I, I live on a golf course, and I golf, and McSwain still hasn't come out and golf with me up there, but I golf, and I golf with these old guys, and they're all retired. Most of them have money, and, but they don't have God. And I'm trying to be a peacemaker, and this one guy stops me on the golf course the other day. He goes, ah, oh, these two guys are fighting, and they said that you're on their side, and you're on their side. And I said, I'm just trying to be a peacemaker and get forgiveness. And, you know, I'm used to doing that in churches, you know, but I'm not used to doing this these old millionaire golfer guys, you know, and it wasn't working too good. And, the, and this, this guy says to me, and I think he was drunk, but that's what he does. So, you know, he says, well, you know, you're, you're just, this is just now your new flock. You're, just, you're dealing with these guys. These are new flock. I said, I said well, David... I'll tell you what, you'd be part of my flock too. And his eyes are like this big. Okay, okay, so I'm just making all these golfer guys part of my flock here, see? But the word of the Lord is what they have to hear. They have to somehow find, they don't, they've never been in church. They don't know the Bible. They don't know anything about Jesus. Some of them have Catholic backgrounds. Some of them have, you know, when I was a little kid, I got took to church by grandma. But they don't know. But what they need is Jesus. What they need is the word of God. And all I can do is be a light and have opportunity and have a word in my mouth and in my heart and, and be there. And that's all you can do for whoever God puts you around, whether it's some retired people, whether it's people at school, whether it's people you work with, whether it's people in the military, wherever, <clears throat> you need to find out how you can have a word in your mouth. You can have a word in your mouth. Hmm. Is the word of God with you? The world needs the word of the Lord. How much they need the word of the Lord. <clears throat> they hear so much nonsense. No common sense in our world. Very little common sense. It's just the stuff that you hear on the news and, and read about and what people have. It's just no common sense, no spiritual sense, no moral relativity. There, there's just an absolute void in our society today. What is the answer for that? Yes, we're to be a light. We have to keep shining, like your sign says there. We have to keep loving people. Yes, we have to keep serving. Yes, that's all part of it. I like to tell our church at home, we, we're putting a face on Jesus because the only, only face that the world sees of what Jesus is like is what they see in you. The only face that they see of what Jesus, uh, Christianity is really truly like is what they see in you. Paul said that you are the living epistle read of all men. You are the book, the Bible they read because they're not going to go home and get out their Bible and start reading it, but they're going to be reading you all the time. And the world needs what you have. And this verse in Ezekiel 37, 4 is the story of the prophet who was taken to a valley that was full of dry, brittle bones. And they were dead bones. And God challenged the prophet. He said, Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? It didn't look like they could live. I mean, can you imagine a bone yard, a skeleton yard, dead bones? And someone says, can they live? I mean, there was no body. There's bones. But Ezekiel gave the answer that all of us should learn to give. When we are posed by a question of insurmountable odds or unmistakably a miraculous situation is needed. And the answer was this, God, you know. And so this is what Ezekiel was told by God. He said, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. What can bring dry bones to life is the word of the Lord. Maybe some of your friends are what you would say dry bones or some of your own children or some of your other loved ones or some close friends. 
that they're just dry bones. They're lifeless. They don't have any freshness. They don't have any life. They don't have any joy. They don't have any purpose for living. They're, they're wandering in, in confusion and darkness, and, and they're dry bones. What do they need? Yes, they need Jesus, but how are you going to give them Jesus? By having the word of the Lord. When Jesus came, he continually preached, continually taught, continually revealed the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Jesus is the word. He is the name uh, that has his garments dipped in blood. His name is the word of God. Man will not live by bread alone. Every word, every word. He opened the scriptures, the word, the word, the word. If you will be a man, if you'll be a woman, if you'll be a young person that gets in the word of God, lets the word of God get in you and can be said of you, the word of the Lord is with him. You'll be able to give that word. You will have an answer, as Peter said, always have an answer for the person who asks you, why do you have hope? Why do you have joy? Why do you go to church? Why do you worship Jesus? Why do you lift your hands? Why do you sing songs? Whatever question they might ask, you need to have the word of the Lord, because the word of the Lord says this, that king in a moment of life and death, for all his troops, was looking for a word from God. And when he heard that Elisha was not far away, he said, the word of the Lord is with him. Oh, there's no greater joy than to be said of you, the word of the Lord is with him. 